Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a knife handle guard. This is going to be a relatively advanced uh, project. We're going to make a Damascus steel guard for a knife, kind of similar to a Randall knife or something like that. Um, the guard is going to be made using uh, Damascus steel, and it's also going to be made using uh, a CNC um, mill. So uh, it's going to be pretty complicated, but uh, you know, I, I really think that a lot of folks who watch these videos are kind of aspirational. They're, they're looking to up their game, learn techniques maybe that they can use further down the road, tools that they maybe don't own now but would like to use later. So this one's being offered in that sort of spirit. A couple weeks from now, I'm going to make another guard more for a Bowie knife, and it's going to be super duper simple. Uh, and use very, very simple tools. So if this one's a little too complicated for you, hang in there. We're going to have a, a much simpler project in a couple of weeks. All right, let's get started. The steel for this guard was made by combining alternating layers of high carbon steel and a nickel-based steel called 15N20. This is the simplest form of Damascus. Some people prefer the term pattern welded steel which amounts simply to stacking and folding the steel with no additional twisting, cutting, smashing, or other techniques for pattern development. After the first forge weld, the steel was drawn out, cut, restacked, and forge welded a second time, yielding about 100 layers. Because the guard's a very small piece, obviously, we'll just be using a little piece of this billet. I designed the guard in a CAD CAM program called Fusion 360. For a small and relatively simple fitting, the tool paths are fairly complicated because of the curvy nature of the design. I won't go too deeply into the design and the CNC side of this thing, but suffice it to say that the design and generation of the CAM tool paths took about a day and a half. Anybody who thinks CNC milling is just a matter of bolting something to a machine and hitting a big green button has not looked into the subject too carefully. It's very, very time consuming work. All right, let's get back to the shop. I surface ground the sides of the billet to make them square for the vise. This could have been done more quickly on a mill, but I've been testing out the belt grinder attachment on my Tormach surface grinder, so I just gave it a buzz cut in the grinder. Before blasting into a piece of Damascus that I've already invested 8 or 10 hours of work into, I wanted to do a test run. So I ran the program on a piece of mild steel at very unaggressive speeds and feeds to make sure everything worked. I'm used to milling stainless tool steel, so the mild steel seemed like butter. The Damascus will be a good bit harder, but still nothing like stainless. Everything went flawlessly on the dummy test, so I moved on to the Damascus billet. In the first operation, I milled out the pocket in the center of the fitting with an Altin coated four flute carbide end mill running at 4400 RPM at about 10 feet per minute with a very light depth of cut. Altin coated carbide doesn't require coolant on steel, but I ran it anyway, mostly for chip removal. If you haven't done any machining, leaving chips grinding around in pockets like this is terrible for end mills. Next, still with the same tool, I ran an adaptive clearing strategy to remove most of the material.
Next, is what's known as a ramp pattern in Fusion 360, where the tool just runs around and around the part with a ball end mill. This is designed to smooth everything out. In this case, it was an uncoated two flute carbide end mill. I tried a variety of different milling strategies for smoothing out the curves of the part in Fusion 360, and this seemed to be the least worst of the available choices. If I'd been doing this as a production part, I would have worked harder to find something that didn't waste time running around the back of the guard. But this toolpath worked, so I wasn't going to spend another four hours to save two and a half minutes of machining. I'm actually working on the knife right along with the fitting, so I should have a video about that later in the week. I'll put up a link to that as soon as it's ready. Plans for this guard, as well as for that knife, will go up on my Patreon page, so they'll be available to all subscribers. Finally, I cleaned out the slot for the blade using an 8th inch and then a 16th inch carbide end mill. Once the part was complete, you've got this big base that's left, so that has to be gotten rid of. I took the part out and ground off the excess on my grinder. Again, if this had been a production part, I'd have flipped the part and decked it, but that would have required some fairly specialized fixturing. Much easier on a one-off to just grind it off. Once the excess was mostly cleaned away, it was back to the surface grinder to flatten the top face of the guard. Once you can see the slot for the tang peeping through there, you're done. Now comes the fun part, hand sanding. If you have a channel devoted to knife making, you get used to helpful servants of truth posting in the comment section about how people are getting ripped off buying custom knives, how overpriced they are, how rich knife makers are getting, blah, blah, blah. Let's subject that to the scrutiny of logical analysis just for yucks. I spent roughly an hour and a half hand sanding this tiny little part. You can imagine if a knife is composed of you know, five or six parts that all require as much hand sanding as this, then any high quality handmade knife could involve as much as an entire day of hand sanding. At 30 bucks an hour, the wage of a second rate dental hygienist, that's $240 worth of labor just for the sanding of the knife, not including anything else. An observation humbly offered. After a few minutes on a buffer, I degrease the fitting, then immerse it in a dilute solution of ferric chloride to bring out the pattern of the Damascus. I have a very scientific way of determining how long to leave it in the etching. Put it in, walk the dog, put the dog back in the house, take out the fitting. This is always a really cool process to me. Goes in all shiny, you have no evidence whatsoever that it's Damascus, and then when it comes out, it's transformed. And there we are. Two and a half days of work later, this dinky little part ready to be added to a knife. Hope you enjoyed that. Like I said at the beginning, if you're looking for something simpler, hang in there a couple weeks from now. I'm going to do another guard. It's going to be very simple, all made with hand tools, nothing fancy about it at all. And that one's going to be a little more appropriate for a Bowie knife. But the basic techniques that you use for these, really pretty similar for all of them. All right, thanks for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. 
If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!